book for my granddaughters. These go over here in the top drawer. This is their area they craft. This is their drawer dedicated to their stuff. Picked up this traffic cone. Was I not just saying in the last video if I could find something that was big enough for the doll's head, I could make the body. If I proceed in this idea, in this project, this could become a body to my farmhouse country doll ornament. But I'll take the ornament and make it into a doll, so it won't be uh, Christmassy. It would be a country farmhouse type Welcome tabletop to the year doll. 2020. This is Legacy's Little Luxuries Arts and Crafts YouTube and your host, Miss Jones, or you may call me Basha. That is what my grandchildren nicknamed me, is Basha, and it's Polish for grandmother. Anyhow, this year we're going into a lot of new DIYs, but a lot of the old ideas and items that we see all the time at the Dollar Tree. So I'm trying to bring you into something that's not seasonal. This one is, you can make this all year long. Plus, I did make something with the taller traffic cone, so you'll have to stick around through the video. The little angel that I made for this DIY will be for our Valentine's decor this year. You will see her in my craft room later on. And I just used a fairy skirt from Dollar Tree, the roses from Dollar Tree. Everything's from Dollar Tree except for this little trim and I'll tell you where you can pick that up at. But you, like I said, I'm giving you the basic ideas you can take off with any color scheme you want because all you're doing is using a dollar to buy the base. Alrighty, so let's get ourselves a cup of coffee. I have mine. It's morning blend. My coffee station's right over here. Grab yourself a cup of coffee. Let's head to the craft room. Let's turn on the fluorescent light and let's get going right away on this DIY. And subscribe, please help me build my channel. I appreciate all the newcomers this year. I see that I advanced in the YouTube world in the past month or so, and I thank you subscribers. But bring some more of your friends on over to my channel. For this year, we're going to be filled with a lot of Dollar Tree ideas, a lot of ideas of things we already have at home, and I'm going to try to remodel my kitchen this winter so you will come right along with me in the ideas that I provide. All right, let's head to the craft room. I decided to cut the top first. Now I did start cutting with a utility knife. But I want this a little shorter. Yeah, I think this will be a lot better for the height. So I cut off about, I'd consider this an inch and a half to two inches of the tip of this traffic cone. Now I was even thinking about trimming right here and here and here. Um, so that it don't stick out from the ruffle, but yet it'll still be able to hold standing up straight. So I will. I will cut this just kind of on the angle here so that it ends up being like a circle. Okay. I trimmed it up just a tad. Okay. Stands upright, it doesn't tip. Eventually, I will have lace right here. But now I'm going to cover this cone. And of course, I'll just use this because it's leftover fabric and you won't really see it anyways, but I want to cover up the cone part. So let's begin doing that next. Just wrap it. And then I tucked it in right here for now because I'm not sure how I'm going to assemble the head. As you know, most of the time when I have a DIY in my mind, you get to see the first one. So there you go. I just wrapped it. You know, try to take away that orange. Now, I'm going to cut 
these fabric squares and glue them all together to make one big huge square. It's going to take some time because I'm not going to sew it. I'm going to use hot glue and piece it all together. So that's next. Now as you can tell, working on the tablecloth and hot glue will burn if I let it set. So I'm using a glass cutting board. And what I'm going to do is add glue and then just piece this over it and then go down the line all 42 inches. But since I have limited space, I'm going to do probably about eight inches at a time. All right? And as that dries, I'll push it this way and then continue to seal these two pieces. And then I will add on to the next row and then the next row, but using a cold glass cutter, okay? This is a cutting board. That way, glue dries, the hot glue dries, and I can just peel it right off, and then it won't dry on here and then melt it. It didn't melt this when I placed it on it because I had it on low setting. Okay, that's the key. Low setting is the best, but it takes a while for it to bond too, so you have to give it some pressure when you do use the glue. You have to like Go like this and hold on to it for a little bit or use something cold like the end of your scissors and press on it but keep it on low temp All right, if you're just joining my YouTube channel, I appreciate it and thank you. Oh, I'm not going to skip this part like I normally would because I have completed this part in the past videos, but I realize I'm getting new subscribers all the time and that's great. So if you don't catch the other videos, here's how I use the weaving pattern. I just take the very top of the fabric piece. Now this is the one that has the four pieces. I double up on the thread and then I make a little stitch here in the corner to get it started. But I need this long enough, this length of the thread, long enough to circle around the body, the comb. So look how long it is right now. And I can adjust it later on. It's better to have the thread longer than shorter. All right, so I'll have it, oh, probably about a foot. Okay, so once that's tied, it's secured on the needle. I just go in and I start weaving it back and forth. This is how I make my country rag flowers. But I use one strip of fabric and it's about two inches wide to two and a half inches wide. The jelly rolls, these fabric style that I'm using is a two and a half wide by 42 long. So I just weave and then I pull it through and it lands on that thread. Okay, and I continue to weave. I want to tangle it up. This is a long thread. There. So see, as it tightens, I have control on how tight I want it to go around the cone. So this would be the top part of the cone. I would tighten it, but then the dress would flounce out around the cone. 
And that's what I want it to do. Sometimes back and forth. You don't have to be particular on how far apart. So once you get the habit of it, you will end up just doing it your way. It's no right or wrong way. Like I said, it's all in the tightening of the thread. What the heck happened? I lost the thread. What? Way back here? Wow. <laughs> okay. Let's do this again. I pulled on it too hard. It's alright. I'm here to have fun and lower my blood pressure. Not sweat the small stuff. Did you watch my video when I was stringing the 150 lights on that Bethlehem cross that I made out of the coat hangers and I accidentally cut the wire? On the lights, oh my goodness. Talk about almost having a mini heart attack, but I didn't. I fixed it. You know, I went through many, 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 many years of working and stressing out every day, worrying about what the boss would say, worrying about co-workers, worrying about paying my bills at the end of the week. Raising my kids by myself most of the time, etc., etc., etc. I'm fully medically retired now, and it's time to relax. That's why I started the YouTube channel as well, so I can show my grandchildren or they can remember the things that I made, how I did it. And if I make mistakes, they can also realize that that's what a hobby is all about. It's not about perfection. Nobody pays me to be perfect. But you need to pat yourself on your back too. So a lot of people won't like your art and your style. But that's all right. I rather have people that follow me and get a basic idea. Use your own colors. You want to learn how to do something like this? Here you are. Here's your video. But you don't have to use a cone from Dollar Tree. You can use a styrofoam cone. You can use other objects. I'm just showing you how to put it together. And have a fun doing it. So see, we just go all the way through here, pull the thread, and continue. Like I said, I'm in December right now, so if this makes it to YouTube, and you're seeing it now, I have yet to finish my Wizard of Oz shadow box and fix my background wall behind me into a valentine theme maybe or something close to it so but i wanted to make this dress keep keep busy okay so see how i could tighten it so I could tighten it and I can loosen it. These are excellent ideas to make your own valance on your curtains. Make your own. You can make dollhouse curtains up this way. Dresses are ornaments that I showed you. This is how I made Mary Marshmallows brim on her bonnet. Here's the star pattern. 
on the back, the quilted star pattern. That too is on a DIY. But these are just three strips of fat or two strips of fabric. Weave together just like I just demonstrated and then it forms her bonnet. And I did pin this. I pinned it on. So this is an ornament. But I decided now I want to make it into a doll. So here I did a collar and then of course her face and then of course the quilted pattern. So it's actually a three design in one. I think I'm going to have to remove this area in order to adhere her to the top of this cone. But when I get to that, I'll get to that. Anyhow, I wanted to demonstrate this idea. Now this is going to go around the cone and I'm just going to start to dress the cone into little Miss Mary Marshmallow's body. And when I have it adjusted, I will just hook the two together and sew it. All right? The camera was on the cone. <laughs> Can't find my tripod. Alrighty, I have one, two, three, four layers of lace around the bottom of this traffic cone. Who would have thought this is a traffic cone? <laughs> right now I'm just gently pushing the lace against the hot glue. Making sure it's nice and tacky and covered. There we go. Now this ruffle will come down. This will be the next layer that I can adjust. And I will glue this ruffle to the cone. Just about right there. Other than turning it upside down. There's no way, no how, anybody would know you're using a traffic cone. Here's your other ruffle. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's your lace ruffle. Here's your other ruffle. Now the dress. Unpin it, and down she comes. Look at that. There's our pine tree. In blue, but that's okay. Extra material that I had left over. Here's the back. So what I'm going to do is adjust the back a little bit. Maybe glue the two together just with a dab of glue just so it stays closed. I'll work on the collar next. I will add some of this lace around the collar. Okay, it's called Buy the Spool. It's $2.50. However, I remember I did not pay $2.50 for it. But I don't remember what I paid for it. I had this in my stash for two years. And it's already pre-ruffled. Okay, there's a seam on it. So it's easily attached around the a circular surface or great for mixed media art and shabby chic so think I'll place just a layer right there because the collars might poof up and I don't want to show this part either I'm going to add some 
of this around it and then I'll add the collar and then we'll see what looks like from there. Two layers right here and it's just hot glued. And then I went around the bottom and the way that the dress laid on the ruffle, I just went I just went underneath it a bit, added some hot glue. So actually the ruffle on the bottom looks like it's attached to the dress. It brings the dress down and in a more of a straight position and then the ruffle still is ruffled out a little bit more. Okay, here's my back side. Place it back this way. Oh, every time I use the needle I always wonder if I'm going to pick my finger and leave blood on my cloth. Well, today I didn't do that, but my nose started bleeding. <laughs> um, I don't know why. Probably the dry, the heater's on and the house is dry. And I get nosebleeds from time to time in the winter. Plus my brain tumor, when my one brain tumor was removed, they went up through my nose. And since then... I, like I said earlier in earlier videos, I can smell things that people can't. It, I have a lot of complications with my eyes because the tumor was by my optical nerves. And then I also have the nose bleeding. So today I was hoping I didn't get any blood on the collar. I'm trying to ruffle the collar right now for the top. And I didn't. It looks like I'm good to go. Alrighty, let's get going with this. This is turning out really super nice. Okay, so I have that much left showing. The collar's on. It's glued. And then I'm going to add one layer and then the head. Now, how will I add the head? I'm going to glue it on. I might add, I'm going to add a little fabric tack around this button. I'm going to keep the button on it. It's wood and it'll help secure up here as well. And then once it's secured, I will bring the bottom layer of the collar, which is this polka dotted color around the base of the cone and glue it as well. Okay? First, let's add some lace. Now with the combination of that fabric tack and then hot glue, I'm going up inside and attaching the gold dotted to the lace a little at a time around this neck. I have to put some glue right there and then push on it. All right, and go completely around like that. This is time consuming, but the head's going to stay attached. When I made the ornament, Little Miss Mary Marshmallow, who would have thought, since I did make a two-layer collar, it would come in handy, that bottom layer would come in handy to attach to this cone. If I would have just made a one-collar layer, oh boy. I think the ingenious idea when I did do two layers perfect to add a body because then you attach this material to the body and that's what I did. Look at that. You can't lift this part up and then this part shows the lace. So you can't even see the red cardinal material. Now why did I add red cardinal material to the cone. First I said it was to cover the cone, but second, 
it was also that in between barrier cloth to attach to this cloth with hot glue because plastic and cloth and hot glue it don't stay forever you would have to use fabric tack around this entire piece this whole time but attaching vinyl tablecloth to fabric with hot glue it'll stay because that it'll melt it and the fiber the plastic of the glue when it's heated it's called thermal plastic it's heated but then when it dries it expands hardens but it attaches the fiber from the cloth and then the fiber material from the tablecloth all right do you I hope you understand what I mean if you did plastic which is thermal plastic you're using for the hot glue once that dries and hardens there's there isn't any fibers and plastic for it to bond so guess what hard glue rehardens again and then eventually whatever you're going to it will come apart that's why you use fabric tack because this bonds plastic to wood or plastic to lace plastic to cloth why because fabric tack has a cellulose acetate in it you remember when we used to chew bubble gum and place the bubble gum underneath the desk at school and it would stick and then the janitor would always have a hard time getting the bubble gum off the desk because there's cellulose in bubble gum. Now fabric tag dries in a sticky form like bubble gum. So it will attach to whatever you're bonding together. Okay? Like bubble gum. I think that's the only way I can explain it in layman's term. You must know your chemicals, okay? E6000, we'll talk about that another day. But just remember, fabric tack is like bubble gum. Hot glue is plastic you're heating. So does plastic bond to plastic? No, because hot glue is heated through the gun, but then it is cold when it sets. Guess what? Two cold objects, plastic to plastic, comes apart. That's why in a lot of reefs, people's reefs will come apart. If you use fabric, if you use fabric and wood and you use hot glue, it'll come apart. It's no guarantee it's going to stay together. And that's why your materials. Okay, so there we go. Um, I think I'm going to end this project for now. I was debating on arms. And a little, I have some of the Dollar Tree Feather Duster Fiber, which is very soft and fur-like. I was thinking of like a hand muff if I make two arms. And it looks like her hand's staying warm with this hand muff. However, how would I make the arms? I don't know. And then I could place a cape over her. But then I have, I do not have any material that will match any of this. It's all used up now. So if I were to do that, I'd have to find some type of material that would kind of blend with this gold, these pine trees, Christmas trees, the snowflakes, the polka dots, the star, or even a white. Even maybe the white micro, micro cloth from Dollar Tree. Yeah, I probably could make a cape out of that. We don't want her to look too richy, you know, too rich. She's a, a country girl, Holly Hobby inspired in my mind. So maybe like Laura Ingalls Wilder, Little House on a Prairie. They didn't wear mink or fur, but then again, it's art. So, but that's what I'm thinking of next. You will see her in my future videos. I will talk about her. And if I add on to her, you will see that as well. So thank you for stopping in. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Share this video to your Facebook groups. I'm glad you were all the way through the video with me because I add my tips of the trade. Or the tips for the hobbyist. And I just gave you a tip about the glue. I think I might bring the glue up quite a bit this year in 2020. 
Now we have a little bit of glue stragglers hanging on Little Miss Mary Marshmallow um, because I did use a lot of glue. The best thing I can do is get out my heat gun or hair dryer and go around this doll. I have a Lady Z Susan. I could spin her around. Right now she's just on the the cold glass cutting board that I recommend you use if you're gluing with hot glue a lot. Look at this. She turned out great. Who would thought? And the head is staying put. I'm going to pick her up now. See if I can pick her up through her. Look at that. Still have the ornament hook. I could hang her right on the chandelier. Wouldn't that be cool? She's spinning around on the chandelier. I can add some eyes. Maybe some eyelashes. You can get the fake eyelashes at Dollar Tree. And maybe uh, open her eyes up and add some cute little lashes. Not sure. But here she is. Send my blessings out to you and your family. Or me and my family. See you soon and look for the background. I hope this video makes it to my channel. If not, I will place it in my archives. But here she is, little Miss Mary Marshmallow now has a body from the Dollar Tree traffic cone. Bless. Well, I thought I was making a sign-off video yesterday and ending my DIY. However, I went shopping to Dollar Tree today and I thought, well, how could I make her arms? So I came up with the idea to use this styrofoam ring and cut it to the length of two arms. And some of the material I found at Dollar Tree was this pillowcase in light blue. And then I'm probably going to make a collar at the end of each arm that ties into anything that I have left in my stash. And I'm hoping I have at least two pieces of material left that blend with any of the materials here. Because I know I don't have enough left to cover an arm. And I wish I did. If I just had one more of these Christmas trees, I could cover the arm. I could make a sleeve. It would blend. But other than that, um, all I can come up with is this. And then, of course, remember, I did a DIY on how to make the star pattern on a ball, a foam ball. This is only a dollar. The pins stick in really well, and it's very inexpensive, especially if you just want to learn how to do the quilted pattern. And I finally found some more. And then I thought this was the cutest towel. Home sweet home, mason jar. You know, if you've been following my videos, I have a lot of mason jar decor in my kitchen. So this is cute. So I picked up one. I had a couple of them, but I just wanted one. Might be a decorative towel for that cheese grater towel holder that I made. Make sure you find that video. Everything I have in my house, I usually make myself. I don't go to the home store and buy home decor. If I do, something like this, grandkids make life great, and then maybe this calendar, stuff like that I'll buy. But most of the time, if I want something like a doll or, you know, something else I usually make it myself so anyhow let's see how this continues it's not the end of the video yet I know in this area is where I can attach the foam arms I just glue it up against this area right in here but I have to go through my stash and make sure <clears throat> I have some of the material left that's already on the dress and, of course, if I use this for her center and make a muff, a hand warmer muff, that'd be great for right now. Dollar Tree, my Dollar Tree, this being December 19th, I asked them, when are you bringing in the Valentine's decor? And they said the day after Christmas. So I have to wait for 
the hearts and the pink ribbon and all that jazz. Because I really want her to carry a bouquet, a Valentine bouquet. And it just depends on how long it's going to take me to do this video. Now I do have some of this material left over. And this is in her dress and I could make sleeves out of this so I do have that option and like I said like I only have a little tiny square pieces left and this is on her bonnet so anyhow I'm going to go through this stash see what I can come up with what I have left and make a little ruffle at the end of her arm Maybe use the lace again and go from there. She's not finished yet. I need arms. <laughs> okay, I attached one arm. I wanted to see how it would lay on the dowel and what pat side of the pattern I wanted. And yes, I just glued it right here in between the very attached collar layer where the collar was already on the ornament and then this piece that I made for the cone underneath it. And then the material is wrapped. So here's your Here's your styrofoam. Cut it in a slant right here because that's going to act as the shoulder. And then I cut it this way to act like the hand. Cut it to specification because just going to depend on what size cone you use, what size ornament, etc. It's all going to depend. So that's why I decided to use the foam because I can adjust and I don't want her hands to come together just yet I want her to be able to hold on to something so that's about the size I want my arm to face I hope you could see this okay so I made my material three pieces glued together and then brought together to form a sleeve then I'm just going to slide this piece of foam through, just like that. All right. Now, since I've sh showing the snowflake, I want to show the snowflake, so it's going to look like this. So all in all, I have to do is trim right up here and glue it to the foam. So I had this much left. And then trim this down to glue it to form the hand. Just to cover the foam. Right? Like I said, this part will be covered with the collar. This part's going to be covered with whatever she's going to hold. But there's my arms. There's the idea of it. And I'm going to glue it and see how it turns out. Now with the lace, I ended up facing it this way because once the glue dries, once I get the muff on, I'm going to flip this forward a bit so that way the collar sticks out, out of the outside of the muff. Okay, so you get two of these in one pack at the Dollar Tree. They break open. They remind me of a Kotex for you ladies who understand the way the material is. But you start right there and you place your finger in the inside and then you break this apart. Keeping one side together. Alright. So let me demonstrate. So you want this muff 
it's already wide enough for me. Okay, here's the front side, but I want to attach the back side so that it does go all the way around. Okay, so here's your muff. You look for the end that you can pull apart, and you only pull apart one side. All right, you go right in the middle, place your finger in there. and then start pulling apart. If you rip it, that's okay. I'm used to using these, so I'm familiar with it. If you're just using it for the first time, don't worry about it. You can always just buy yourself a piece of shag rug from Walmart to make the muff. And you know, it's going to be a basic little pillow sack is what it's going to be. So you go all the way down across it and try to pull it apart. You pick the best side to face the front, the worst side to face the back. I have a feeling this will be my, oh, maybe there it goes. I was going to say. All right. And then you continue going across. So you can get it as wide as you can. That way I can attach this piece to this piece. Place this up behind her. Place this in front of her. And then glue a little bit here and there. And it looks like she has a muff warmer. The old fashioned furry muff warmer. While they're going in that open carriage ride. Open sleigh ride. Or when they're walking up to church to keep their hands warm. Because they didn't have... The ladies really didn't have mittens back then, you know. So this will be an upgrade for Holly Hobby because Holly Hobby never had a furry hand warmer. But that's how I would do it, okay. One dollar, and that's how you can use this. I use these for a lot of wreaths too, a lot of Santa and gnome beards. Very inexpensive, and they're so soft. You know, they're feather dusters, of course. They are really soft. And you can just get away with using one if you want. See? One would be fine. It'd cover it and be perfect. But I'm going to use both. So there you go. There's my, another tip for today. Since this is another day and I decided to add the arms. And I do have these pieces left. And I do have this piece left. So, let's place this on the dowel and make a muff, and I think she'll be finished for now. I want to be able to remove this muff in the future. I am not gluing it at all to the arms or the hands. I place the back up in and through the dowel, but then I just added glue down the center to attach the front. Now I'm just going to add glue here and here and pinch it together. Nothing's going to touch this because I want to remove this and I want to place bouquet of flowers, okay, in the spring or whenever I decide to do it. So that's Something I want to talk to you about. If you want it to be a forever muff, glue it to the arms. If you want it to be temporary, just glue them together without touching the material. My little granddaughter Everly made this for me in preschool yesterday. When she stopped in after school, she gave it to me. I want to archive it in this video. Okay, so here she is. Her little lace collar sticking. Her wrist collar. There's her muff. Look at this. Can I go wrong? Leftover materials. The star quilted pattern. Half of styrofoam ball. The other half you paint. 
the add loop de loop yarn for the hair. And then you also seen how I created the dress in this video. And now the muff. Look at that. Gosh, I wish I had a muff like this. <laughs> Final photos. I can't go wrong. I uh, trying to match the leftover pieces to Miss Caramel Corn. The only thing I have to match is this area, the striped. I have that on the dress part. But that's about it. I do not have any more of the dark denim that's around her bonnet. So I'm going with these lighter colors in the front, which is fine. It's still going to tie in and I will use a muff, a fur muff for her, for a hand warmer. And like I said, I won't glue it directly on her arms because I'm going to remove the muffs after January and they're going to be holding uh, Valentine's accessories. So that's why I'm making two of these. I might make a third one if I can find Miss Annie's uh, Cardinal. She's uh, She has Cardinal on her, so... If I could ever find some cardinal material to make her dress, I could do a third one with Miss Annie. But this is the color scheme I'm coming up with. Patched together with hot glue and going to add to here. But now I have to find my needle and weave together to form a ruffle. I can place it on here like this, but I don't want to. I want to ruffle it a little bit. All right, my layers are finished on the comb. Now, let's look at the bottom of Miss Caramel Corn. You can find the video where I made her, created her back in 2019. But she has a bell on the bottom, and she has the stripe pattern on the bottom. So, what I'm going to do is add another of the stripe pattern and ruffle it and that will finish the top here but then also blend in to the pattern I made originally on this ornament. Now that bell does fit in the cone so I can glue the bell right on the top of this cone you know, cut a hole a little bit in that material right there. And then just place the bell right through there. And then I will glue around the collar here to attach it to the cone as well to make it secured. I can do that. I don't have to remove the bell if I don't want to. But I had this cute little bell on Miss Caramel Corn. So she could ring. And now that I want to add her and make her a doll, I can either remove the bell or keep it on there. It will fit inside that cone since I cut the tip off. And that's one of the reasons why I did and said you don't have to because it just depends on if you add a regular styrofoam piece up here at the top, of course, you didn't even need to cut the top of the cone. The cone can adhere. Okay, I turned on my fluorescent light, and here she is. Now this muff can come right off. I did not glue it to the arms or the hands. I just glued, I just placed one in the back, one in the front, and just went around and glued it. I can slip it right off. 
and she can have something to hold in February. I think as I move along, always the second one turns out better than the first one. That's because I know what I'm doing by the second time. Here she is. Who would think that back in November, early December, when I made these cute little ornaments, they would turn into a doll. Once I seen the traffic cone in the toy section at Dollar Tree. Who would have thought? And I've always, like I said, I've always used these feather dusters for beards. You know, for my gnomes. Fur on my witch's upcycle boot. When I made the Victorian boot, I used the fur for that as well. Look back on those videos. I took the Dollar Tree Witch's boot and I removed all the tinsel and I upcycled it into a Victorian style shoe. Kind of like the old fashioned stuff. I guess you can figure that out, huh? Now look at the collar blends right into the material. It looks like this doll was made from start to finish on the same day when it was not. I did not know I was going to make a doll out of these ornaments. So I will place her next to the other Miss Mary Marshmallow. I did this one a little differently but it is on a Dollar Tree cone. Pretty light, not that heavy.